Hello, Algebra 2 students. This is an introduction to the absolute value function. And really what this focuses on is the broader concept of transformations in Algebra 2. This is seven, section 2.7 in our textbook. Uh, let's revisit something that we studied in chapter one, uh, which was the concept of absolute value. Uh, remember that we talked about how the absolute value of the number seven is seven. So when you take the absolute value of a number, you just make it positive. We know this. I just want to reiterate it. Also, remember, when we take the absolute value of negative 7, what absolute value does is it just makes the number positive. So the absolute value of negative 7 is also 7. In this section, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the function of f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Or Remember, you're allowed to think of this as y equals the absolute value of x. What happens when we graph this function? We know very well what happens when we graph linear functions, right? Like the function y equals x. We're going to get, uh, if we were to graph this, we get a line that looks like this. We know this by now, but what we're going to be studying is what happens when we graph y equals the absolute value of x. So. This is called the parent function. Remember, the parent function of any type is the most basic version of that function. So the most basic absolute value of function is just the absolute value of x. Let's go ahead and graph it. Uh, what happens when you plug negative 2 in for x? Well, the absolute value of negative 2 is just 2. What about when I plug negative 1 in for x? The absolute value of negative 1 is just 1. Absolute value of 0 is 0, 1 is 1, and 2 is 2. We can go ahead and graph this. Negative 2, comma 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Right? I just plotted these points. What we actually end up getting is this V-shaped graph. There's one branch, and here's your other branch. The slopes of these branches are essentially 1, and the slope of this branch would be negative 1. For every 1 unit it goes down, it goes 1 unit over. This one, for every 1 unit up, it goes 1 unit over. And so we end up with this function, which is the graph of y equals the absolute value of x. So similar to linear functions, we have this parent function, y equals x. And then that graph looks just like a diagonal. But then we could do different things by putting different numbers in front of x or by adding numbers to x that transformed or changed uh, what the function looks like. Similarly, we're going to do something in uh, with absolute value graphs. We're going to have all these different transformations that can happen. It's obviously not always going to be this graph here where it meets at 0, 0. That's the, we call that the vertex. The vertex isn't always going to be at 0, 0. The branches aren't always going to have a slope of 1 and all these different things. And we're going to have names for these transformations. So one of the transformations is a vertical translation. A translation is shifting the graph, uh, just shifting its position up, down, left, right. So we can move it vertically. Uh, of course, we can move it horizontally, left to right. We're also going to have something called a vertical stretch. And I'm going to kind of focus on these terms because students get them confused a lot uh, or conflated with one another. Uh, vertical stretch and vertical shrink. A graph is a vertical stretch when it is more steep. So the branches are more steep. If it were like this, this would be a vertical stretch. Uh, essentially, what I want you to visualize, and I can't do this because I'm not in front of you, but you have a hand up here and a hand down here, and you're pulling the graph. You're stretching it um, by pulling this direction or this direction. That's a vertical stretch. A vertical shrink is when we flatten it. Okay, this would be an example of an absolute value shrink. It's like you took the original parent function in black here and you stepped on it to squish it, to shrink it. 
And then the last type of uh, transformation that we're going to talk about is a reflection. And a reflection, instead of um, going out from the vertex up in both directions, it would go down from the vertex. Something like this would be a reflection. So I know this looks kind of like a weird spider thing, but uh, these are different transformations that can occur. Uh, oftentimes, I get the question of, well, can we do a rotation? Because that's the other transformation that you guys learned in um, in geometry. And my answer to that is no. And uh, the reason for that is if we were to rotate this graph, something bad happens to it. Uh, if you guys recall a previous lecture, uh, and this should kind of ring a bell, uh, this graph no longer passes the vertical line test. And so it is not a function, right? Remember the vertical line test says you should be able to drag a vertical line across and never have it intersect in more than one place. And it obviously does here. So it fails the vertical line test and therefore is not a function. We're never going to study rotations of the absolute value function in this class. This is a very important slide here. I would pause it right now and write this down. Um, and this is very important, not only for section 2.7, but it comes back essentially in every chapter. Um, and we, with similar terminologies, but different types of functions. Right now it's absolute value graphs, but we're gonna see this time and time again. And the idea is that letters will still be A, H, and K. They're still gonna be applied the same way. So if you can make one really good uh, image of this right now and you understand this really well, it's going to help you a lot in the future. So let's go ahead and talk about each of these things. K is the letter of your vertical translations. If you have a plus K, that's indicating that your graph is going to be shifted up, however many units K is. And if you have a subtract k out here, your k is negative, that's going to shift the graph downward. H is your horizontal translation. And you're, no, you're noticing, hopefully, that the k says plus k and the h says minus h. H is always representing your horizontal translations, and it's always the opposite way that you think it would. So if I'm thinking, okay, what, is a, what does plus h do? And I knew it was a horizontal translation, I would think, well, that would move to the right however many units. But in fact, that's incorrect. Plus h is going to shift to the left, and minus h is going to shift to the right. A is your stretch or shrink factor. If A is greater than 1, we're going to call it a stretch. And if A is less than 1, we're going to call it a shrink. And actually, disregard the negative when you're thinking about this. The negative sign is only indicating if it's a reflection or not. So incorporate that with, with if A is positive or negative. And then if disregard the negative, if the A value is greater than 1, it's a stretch. And if A is less than one, something like a half or a third or two thirds or some fraction like that, that's smaller than one, that would be a shrink. Remember, stretches are more steep and shrinks are more, that's supposed to be the term, a more wide. And that's going to be your slope of your two branches. So let's go and try to apply this information uh, with an example here. This is a pretty basic one. Looking at that table that we just created, minus 2, remember at the end, outside of the absolute value signs, that's your vertical shift. And vertical shifts happen the way that you think they would. So minus 2 is going to shift us down 2. Horizontal shifts are what happens inside the absolute value signs. And this is going to happen the opposite way that you think it will. So if I knew that plus 4 on the inside was a horizontal shift, I would probably think it's shifting to the right 4, but it actually shifts it to the left 4. Remember, our parent function had its vertex at 0, 0. If this didn't have the plus 4 and the minus 2 at it, its vertex would be at 0, 0. But now its vertex is going to be shifted down 2 and to the left 4, its vertex is going to be right there. 
the number in front of the absolute value sign, that's the slope of the two branches. You're going to notice there is no negative sign there, so it's not a reflection, it's not upside down. And the number there, if there was a number there, it would be one, right? One is the thing, if there's no number, it's one, generally. So the slope of your branches are going to be one, it's going to go up one, over one, up one, over one, right? Could continue this on the whole way. In uh, the left side of the vertex, it's going to go up one, left one, up one, left one, giving you this graph right here. Let's go ahead and look at our next example when graphing. Right, so now we're looking at x minus three absolute value plus one. We should know what the plus one is doing. We know plus one is shifting up one. And we know minus three happening inside the absolute value sign. That's your horizontal shift. If I knew it was a horizontal shift and it was subtracting, I would think it would shift to the left three, but it's actually gonna shift to the right three. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to find that point, it would have started at zero, zero, but now it's going to start up one into the right three. Once again, the slope of your branches is just going to be one because that's the number there. So up one over one, up one left one, boom, boom. They do get perhaps a little bit more complicated right now. This one has everything. It has a negative sign in front of the A value. It has a, an A value there, and that's not just one, and it has the H and the K. So just start just like we were, the K value, and this problem is going to shift down one. The minus two inside the absolute value signs. Inside the absolute value signs is your horizontal shift, and horizontal shifts always happen the opposite way that you think they would. I would think minus two would shift to the left two, but it's actually going to shift to the right two. I'm gonna find that point down one into the right two. That's my new vertex. Now this problem has a negative sign in front of the A value. So it's going to be going downward, not upward. And three, you're going to have to recall this on your quizzes. Uh, is that a stretch or a shrink? So you disregard the negative because you know it's a reflection. And you're going to have to also have that keyword on your quizzes. I'm going to ask for you to describe the transformations. This works for the translations. I'm OK with just symbols. But I'm going to want the words for everything else. So the negative sign is a reflection. And that 3 is going to cause it to be a stretch. Remember, when you're considering if it's a stretch or a shrink, disregard the negative sign and just focus on the value of that number. So not only is it a reflection, but its slope is three. So you're gonna go down three over one, down three over one. And that is the graph of this one. Why don't you guys go ahead and pause it here and try this one. See how you do, make sure it's clicking. We know the, pl the plus one at the end is gonna shift up one. We know the plus two on the inside is gonna shift left two. I would have thought it would have been to the right two, but it's actually to the left two. And the one half in front is going to cause this to be a shrink. Up one, left two, that would be that point right there. The one half is the slope out of our vertex. So it's gonna go up one over two, up one over two, and up one left two, up one left two. Connect them. And I know that the graph kind of looks bigger to you guys. It takes up more space in the window, but this is a shrink because it's like someone stood on it and shrunk it that way. Okay, you flattened it.
The last thing I want to show you is called general transformations. And these are not super difficult, but just kind of understanding what the question is asking is a lot of times the most difficult part. So for our equation, it's saying f of x, y equals f of x is shown in the graph. It's saying, hey, this image that I've drawn is f of x. Now it is instructing you to graph f of x plus 3 minus 2. And like I said, this isn't a terribly tricky problem if you understand what it's asking. Uh, we know what minus 2 does in a graph like this. We know minus 2 at this point is going to shift down 2. And then we know that horizontal shifts are what happens like inside the absolute value sign or inside the parentheses. And that shifts opposite the way that you think it would. So I would think plus 3 would shift to the right, but it actually shifts to the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each point of intersection. We have one there, 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 and there. We're going to take all those points and we're going to shift each one down two into the left three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. And then you reconnect them. Because what we want to do is we want to take the original graph, y equals f of x, and shift every point down two and to the left three. And then this purple one is f of x plus three minus two. Uh, with these general transformations, like we just have a shape and we're doing applying the idea of transformations to them, the stretch or the shrink factor is the most complicated uh, part to understand. So with this equation, there is no H or K. We're not shifting it up and down or to left and right at all. But we do have a stretch factor by, we do have a stretch by a factor of two. So what a stretch by a factor of two does, normally we said, remember, it changes the slope. Um, only here's how I want you to think about this in terms of general transformations. I want you to think of it like you're taking every y value, which is the output, right? Every y value, and you're stretching it, you're multiplying it by a factor of two. So for example, this point here is two, three. Remember, if I was showing you this in front of you, I would say, put my hands above it and below it and move the graph this way up and down and stretch it like that. What's essentially happening is all the y values get multiplied by 2. So the y value here, this point is 5, 4. Instead of it being 5, 4, you're still going to input 5, but the y value isn't going to be 4 anymore. It's going to be 8. Because you're multiplying it by a factor of 2. For this point here, this is the point 2, 3. When you're still going to input 2 now, but you're going to multiply the y value by 3. So it's not going to be 2, 3. It's going to be 2, 6. The stretch factor by the stretch by a factor of 2 is taking the y values and multiplying it by 2. So here it's negative 1, 3. It's not going to be negative 1, 3 anymore. It's going to be negative 1, 6. And then this point is just negative 4, 0. And 0 times 2 is still 0. So we've taken this original lines here, this weird graph, and we're taking it, we're pulling up and down on it and stretching it. So now the graph looks like that. That's how you apply a stretch or a shrink factor to a general transformation. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions.